This is hard. Would you say uh, up to this point that that one YMCA and Watford Borough Council were quite work together anyway, or is or is this project for the homelessness situation a new one, a new collaboration, if you like? So we've always worked closely with Watford as effectively the, the district authority that looks after this whole area. Um, but our services have been pretty static. So we've had a really good working relationship, uh, supporting the 150 um, local vulnerable residents each year. Um, well, actually 150 every night of the year. Um, but this is the first time we've really looked, taken a really innovative and forward-looking viewpoint. Again, in, in turn, that's part of a response to the COVID crisis. Um, and this has really enhanced and added some real depth to the relationship. And I'm sure this now won't be the last thing that we work closely with Watford to deliver. I mean, obviously, every, everyone knows on the Ring Road that your massive YMCA building. You can't miss it, can you? How has COVID impacted what you've been doing in that building? So again, thanks to Catherine and the, the overall housing team, um, the impact has been, uh, touch wood, uh, almost nil. So all of our services have continued to run. We've managed to, through a deployment of really proactive hygiene controls and some uh, enhanced social distancing measures, such as no longer exchanging keys, and delivering support sessions in a more socially distanced environment, et cetera. Um, we've just kept the service running. It's stayed full throughout the entire 13 weeks thus far. Um, and we've continued to change people's lives. Everyone knows when they walk through town, they see the homeless sitting on corners and you see them everywhere, obviously. What was the situation that you wanted to address initially? And, and, and also COVID obviously had an impact on that. So the, um, within Watford at the, the end of March, there were circa 80 uh, known rough sleepers within the town. And um, it was very clear to both district, county, uh, national uh, authority bodies that rough sleepers don't have the same access to hygiene controls. It's something as simple as washing hands as frequently as needed to. Um, and within their, their, their environment that they're living in, that again presents uh, enhanced risks. You know, they have a roof over the head. If they get cold, it might be more serious, etc. So when the uh, Ministry of Housing brought everyone in, which was the campaign right at the start of the lockdown process was launched, we immediately reached out to Watford, along with uh, lots of other local um, homeless sector charities. We all sat in one room and said, right, who's got resource, who's got capacity, who can genuinely do something to mobilise almost instantaneously something to help? And at that point, we mobilised the first of the COVID response services, which was called the COVID Rough Sleeper Service. Uh, we repurposed, or rather Catherine and team repurposed um, one entire floor within this building um, and we welcomed in 25 uh, local rough sleepers straight from the streets, roof over their head, comfortable bed, access to the restaurant, access to all of our support services um, and made sure they were safe, made sure that COVID didn't affect them negatively. Um, and uh, then Watford working with their other partners and using their own resources and supported the other 50 or so rough sleepers into either temporary accommodation settings uh, within other hostel environments or hotels. Um, and literally within about two and a half weeks, Watford had no rough sleepers. Um, and, and that was, an, for, for fair play to Peter Taylor, the mayor and the, the Watford Borough Council, they've achieved a government manifesto aim within about two and a half weeks. It's incredible, isn't it? I mean, you, you, you should be rewarded for that. That's absolutely amazing. And Catherine, how difficult was it to, to, to repurpose a floor? Um, it, it was interesting. Um, the staff team pulled together very quickly, probably worked quicker than they ever had done before in processing all the referrals. Um, but there was a, a buzz of excitement. Everybody was determined to make it happen and we filled within a very short space of time. And what's this situation like right now, today, with the people that you've got there and, and, and how is that now moving forward? So in terms of moving forward, the, uh, the initial emergency response, if you think back 13 or 14 weeks, no one really knew what was coming. It was, you know, I think we were all staring down the barrel of what could have been an almost Armageddon situation. As I say, the, the services and everything we've done here in Charter House with our mainline service and that specific COVID rough sleeper response um, has continued to work um, and worked well. So as we moved into June, the um, Ministry of Housing again was saying, brilliant, we've got people in hotels, we've got people in alternate settings, but that's not sustainable. And those individuals are not necessarily moving forward with their lives, they're being kept safe. What we now need to think about is what comes next. What's, what's the next steps, which interestingly is the name of their, 
next campaign. And what we did at that point was speak again, we went back to Watford and said, look, you know, we worked really well in this first initial response. How about we do something more permanent? Um, and again, I think we, uh, we put a proposal together alongside uh, IAS, the head of housing, and there's their delivery manager, and we put together the MCIAA scheme, um, which apparently I'm not to use any more acronyms, but the media... Yeah, that's quite a com complicated one. I haven't got a clue what you said. <laughs> So basically, this is a service um, which delivers a very intensive and specialist amount of support for extra sleepers to help them uh, personally overcome barriers. Well, I think an incredible well done, an incredible thank you for what you've done as well, uh, is absolutely amazing. And I know a lot of credit will go to Peter Taylor, the mayor as well, who, you know, Peter does some incredible things. Uh, I'm always amazed. Uh, but yeah, I mean, absolutely superb. Continue the good work that you're doing. What, what would be really good, and a gen, it's a genuine thank you for myself, uh, our, our executive team, the trustees, the full senior management team, and all of our frontline um, front support staff. So to Watford Borough Council, to Peter Taylor, this has been, and it, it sounds really strange to be saying, it's been an incredibly enjoyable process, not the COVID crisis around the edge, but the, the process of working so closely and um, at such speed um, yeah. to, to make some of these things happen has been it, it, for many years working in this sector, this is the, the most uh, proactive I've seen any district or local authority work. It's been very great to everyone local. This is hard.